Back in 1980, a time when the East's nuclear threat was still a major concern, strange objects were seen over woods near the air base at Woodbridge. It happened for two consecutive nights. On the first night, men reported lights inside a nearby forest, but no formal investigation was made. It was on the second night, December the 27th, 1980, that lights were seen again hovering at the end of the runway. At about 11 o'clock in the evening, Jerry Harris, whose bungalow overlooks the base, saw what he first thought was the lights of a plane, but he soon realized that it couldn't be that because they were on course to miss the runway and crash. They weren't sort of uh, nice steady, they were moving about. So I went down the front door of the house and walked out into the yard here where I am now and uh, I stood watching them, you see, and it's all quiet and, and I listened I couldn't hear any sounds at all. Guards posted near the end of the runway also saw the lights and reported them to the base commander who told them to stay on post. He would investigate. On the 13th of January, surprising two weeks later, Colonel Charles Holt of the United States Air Force sent a memorandum of his findings to his superiors. It mentioned strange glowing objects in the forest, depressions in the ground, and a craft that emitted red sunlight that pulsed. I asked him, did he think it was one of ours? one of theirs, or Russian. And he said none of them. Manchester solicitor Harry Harris has kept in touch with Colonel Holt ever since the incident. He even went to see him at the Bentwaters base. He showed us a thick file of um, diagrams, drawings, statements by the various individuals and witnesses involved. <clears throat> and he also played a tape to us of a uh, sound recording of part of the event, the UFO chase through the woods. According to Colonel Holt, this recording was made while he and some men went into the woods to investigate the previous night's sightings. They're using instruments to check for radiation. I sort of watched them and they were going up and moving about this way and that way and they were going up and they were coming down and uh, I sort of watched them for oh, three quarters of an hour and all of a sudden they disappeared. But just before they went, before they disappeared, there was a lot of activity on the base. I could hear vehicles running around. I could see the flashing lights of vehicles moving about. And uh, I could hear people shouting. It was quiet. And the wind must have been in this direction. I could hear their voices. And they were calling to each other. And then they could hear the roaring of, of the vehicles, and that, which was that time of night. It was unusual. It's thought that what happened that night may never be known, but with help from her co-worker, Dot Street, UFO investigator Brenda Butler decided to try and get at the truth. On the night, Brenda says, there's good evidence for a crash. The um, tops of the trees were all knocked off. There was burn marks on the ground. There was um, depressions on the ground. Uh, you know, and very shortly after that, the Forestry Commission came in and knocked all the trees down, cut all the trees down really quickly. They told us it was because of radiation on the trees. It appears, as now we know, that uh, a team of about three security officers went out in response to visual sightings of this object crashing down and saw a small object about the size of a car manoeuvring in and out of trees and coming down close to the ground. They got so close to it at one point that one of them tried to climb on top of it and was literally spaced out by the experience. The investigating team sent out in 1980 have long since left the Bentwater base. It may soon close down.
After the incident, says Brenda, men were quickly debriefed and held to secrecy. Many were sent to other posts in America or even retired shortly afterwards.